some prof and ROS groups working okay. on 3D, developing 3D and conversions. Um, nice. So it was good to, to chat with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I knew him before, so met them. Yeah, actually, I got just hang out with some German crews. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I met some of them before, so. Who was there from Germany? Uh, Qu Quellen? Quellen? There, his name is Bulen. Bulen. Oh, Bulen. <coughs> Bulen. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I met him in Indonesia before. So, yeah, and then he had, had a crew from um, Aachen University yeah. in Norbert. So, yeah, I was just uh, hanging out with him. I actually met him in the airport. Oh, Bulen. really? That's so we shared the taxi. Nice. That's good. <laughs> and then they went to the wrong place. Yeah. There was two, uh, like he was staying in La Quinta. There was two La Quinta. So then he went to the wrong place. Yeah. The taxi driver was rude. Like he was saying, oh, you, you, should, you guys need to pay like a 15 bucks each. <laughs> Which was like, so, yeah, we didn't pay that. And how did the presentation go? I, was, I think the presentation was good. I, I, the, I was a little bit disappointed because uh, I think education section was not really well received in that conference. Oh, it was like more like an industry or conference? No, I think it was a pretty small conference. I think there were only like uh, four four sessions going okay. on, like four to five uh, sessions going on in, in parallel. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think uh, that small group was pretty good. And it was, I got good feedback. Some of them were interested in actually using it. Yeah. And, uh, that, was, that was good. So. Overall, it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I yeah, I could can tell later, but uh, I got actually pretty good uh, conversation with some quite a bit of other people. So, nice. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a big big potential. I think there's no uh, I was impressed like there's no Maxwell's equation. Any of the talk, <laughs> like, they, like there's no uh, equations. Like it's okay. very like it's very application fine. focused. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, which was interesting. Okay. In I think I was the only person who used the equation. Yeah. <laughs> Briefly, <laughs> not not too much. Yeah, you did show some. Well, it's good. Keep the stand out. <laughs> what are the big problems that they are trying to deal with? Now? I think hydro hydro problem is pretty big. Like so, uh, groundwater and water. Uh, I think hydro is really big, but in very diverse way. There's a uh, like problem of groundwater management, and uh, also like groundwater exploration, and uh, like there are a whole bunch of geotechnical problems related to water. Uh, one interesting problem was uh, so I met that uh, John John Nyquist. Okay. So he was actually pretty good. Yeah. And he was a chair of that session, and uh, he's very interested in synthetic and. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to send him an example. Nice. Probably today. So he has an interesting problem, like a what's called storm wall. Okay. So you've got a highway, then uh, like highway needs some drainaging system, right? Yeah. Like otherwise, it's gonna what, mess it up. Yeah. So what they do is like they make a like a big ditch. Yeah. Uh, next to the highway, so it's like uh, your highways are usually high, and then you have a ditch here, and then there's a like a drainage pump or a drainage pipe. That goes down. Okay. And then, like, understanding how, like, designing that well, designing that drainage system, and also oh, how, like, they, what they do is you put a ditch, put some permeable material, and then cover that with, like, flowers and a whole bunch of crops. Yeah. Right? So that looks nice. Yeah. But, like, it uh, depends upon the precipitation and how you design that, that, that uh, kind of a drainage beach and path. Like, it, it could be very different, and then that's actually like the highway is really long. Okay. And how do you like manage that? How do you monitor that? That's uh, that's what he's working on. And where, like, is there a specific stretch of highway that he's? Working yeah, on? yeah. I think that he got some pilot studies, and okay. he what he wants to do, he wants to put some uh, permanent DC uh, system. Okay. Then uh, what he's really interested in, in like infiltration, so he wants to. Have a good idea about the how the infiltration rate yeah. in each like a like a pixel of the like this path. Like a, he has a ditch and then put a DC line. Okay. If you can the value of infiltration rate for a two D line, yeah, that's that's pretty good. So then then you can pass that to engineers so that they can actually design that range system a little bit better. So the moment they are 
like a certain full did you has one infiltration rate. Right. But depends mm -hmm. upon like the case, it varies and that can scoop things up. Oh interesting. Yeah. And so like is depending on like which stretch of highway is sort of drains better or worse, so change the level of the ditch and all of that. Right, 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 okay. right. And then I think that problem is pretty generic. Not only that storm wall, but uh, like say you got some uh, aquifer recharge. Yeah. Basically, same problem, right? Yeah. You know, you want to know how the infiltration happens. And yeah. What is the rate of that? So that's uh, that's basically the problem. And once you solve one, I think uh, like other things can be solved. I think so. There were quite a bit of talks about that. How people are like doing it. How they are coupling with. Yeah. Uh, Different physics, uh, landfill, UXO, is a pretty, pretty big application. Um, very few mining, <laughs> yeah. very few talks. Yeah, I think that that's mostly that's mostly. And oh, actually, what was inter really interesting, I went to a luncheon at the uh, like a GWB geoscience oh, yeah. border. Yeah, and then there was he was a Canadian guy named. Paul Bauman. Oh yeah, he's from Calgary. I think. Yes, he's yeah. in Calgary. He's working at Wally Parson. Yeah. And uh, he gave a talk at that luncheon. Oh, cool. That was really cool. Like yeah. uh, he, uh, so uh, I think UN and uh, like French government actually they are putting quite a bit of money for Kenya. Uh, like there's refugees to like there are refugees in Kenya. Yeah. And then somehow they want to provide. They need to put they need some water. Right? Yeah. Like they, yeah. So they're developing brown water. Stuff. Yeah. So they spent a lot of money, and they. I think that, like, the kind of uh, it wasn't very successful. Although they actually said it was very successful. Yeah. So actually, he, that GW actually kind of UN asked GW do to come. Yeah. And then can you do? Can you make it better? Yeah. So without less money. Yeah. <laughs> of course. So actually, yeah, he showed the, how he used a very very basic geophysical technique, like you see the seismic reflection. Yeah. Stuff. And to find the water at the Kenya refugee. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was interesting. And then the, there are quite a few things going on, but the important thing was like how to find like a less fluoride, like a less fluid. Like there's a, that most of the groundwater in Kenya, there's high concentration of the fluoride. Oh, okay. And then that actually can make a lot of like a health issues. Yeah. Really? And there's some, some sort of proof, uh, like a, there actually did some studies like oh like pick one person here who has been drink uh, this uh, water for 10 years and 20 years yeah and how bad it is so uh, there's some and is there like a different does it change the resistivity or anything no. i think it wasn't okay, quite true physics i think it's more like a it was like using some some of his hypothetical understanding of the Hydrological system. Okay. And geophysics wasn't wasn't very like a direct indicator for less high, high less fluoride concentration, but yeah. that he has some and they use the geophysics uh, to have some idea yeah. and find some groundwater. Oh, cool. So uh, yeah, it wasn't like in that sense it wasn't very exciting, but that uh, was cool. it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's not very like high technique. Uh, but uh, what I was a little bit disappointed, I think uh, people in that group were kind of like a disvalue, like a, some sort of like cutting edge inversion techniques and okay. like the 3D yeah. inversions or like those kind of things. Because uh, okay, we could do very simple things, yeah. and figure out something useful with some of the hypothesis they they did. Yeah. But I, I think that they can go a bit more, yeah. and then you can extract more because you are spending quite a bit of money. But like ah, oh, yeah. No time. We have limited time. That's kind of their excuse, yeah. which is fine. But I really hope that I can see a little bit more kind of like complicated or like more cutting edge stuff they can do yeah. to extract information. Did you see like I don't know? Was there a given data set or something like that that you would like to get your hands on to show that? Was there one that stood out? Because that would be kind of what, what do you mean? Um, like well, okay, so thinking about. Paul's talk, for example, and it could be, it doesn't have to be his, but like, was there a given data set that you saw, that they showed a little bit of, but you saw potential to do something more? Oh, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Oh. But is there one that's like stood out that would be worth pursuing? Uh, in his talk, yeah. no, I no, think not that, I, that I, not, not in his talk. Yeah. I think it was, like, it was very simple structures. Yeah. And, uh, this inversion was enough to, yeah. 
showed that. But I think the problem was in the frame. Okay. Yeah. 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 Not, not sure. There were no other thoughts that I was thinking, oh, we could do better. Yeah. But my, that'll be cool as somehow connected to like like organization like GWB. Yeah. Uh, and, and a software side. But I'm not not sure. Yeah. Like uh, there was a one talk from Sage Group. Oh yeah. And uh, was Louise Peller in there? No, I no. think she wasn't she wasn't Louise Peller. But uh, but what's interesting thing was like a she, she like a, she was saying like five years of such like a sage. But she she doesn't talk about any anything about geophysics. She talks just talk about the temperature measurement and yeah. how they kind of like uh, change their hydrological models. I actually asked a question: What was the impact of geophysics? And she said, "Well, it wasn't it wasn't that great, and uh, it didn't really help." Uh, yeah. So th that was interesting. Yeah, like, they did five years, and then they thought, "Oh, this is successful." Yeah. Like a field trip. With students, but the uh, geophysics actually didn't, didn't play anything. Really well. And that's <laughs> the point. <right? laughs> oh man, that was, that was okay. Uh, sort of related, but worth keeping on the radar. I'm in touch with um, a number of people at the AGU, and that's why I asked about Louise Pellering. She's the one who's sort of like championing this connection right now. Right. Um, but we've been in touch with the AGU, and she sort of brought forth. We created a document. Um, called Open Source in 5 to 10 Years. I can actually pull that up. Um, might be worth you guys taking a look at as well. Um, and so Louise has been, um, she was in Washington last week chatting with the AGU folks. Um, and um, to get open source software initiative up and running with um, go. Um, and there's a lot of similarities. I mean, like opening up data sets, trying to promote best practices, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so, and it was. Um, got significant funding uh, from NSF and a few other uh, places. Whereas what we're sort of starting, I mean, we don't have any funding at the moment. Um, I don't think that rules it out down the road, but we're just sort of throwing ideas around. I'm just gonna share the screen so I can see it. Um, but anyways, we sent this document um, called, I got an email from Louise and she said, I'm, I'm meeting with everybody tomorrow. Do you have some just like, thoughts or things that we could share. So we, we tossed this together and then sent it um, to the rest of the group involved. So like Jared Peacock, who's at the USGS, right. uh, Leo is involved, Leon Krishner, who's with OpsPy. Um, and so just like sketching out a few things that we sort of want to see with open source um, in particular, because like the AGU is a, a big organization and if they decide to like make this a priority, um, it could really change some things. Right. Um, so sketching out some things that like I think we recognize are important, and, but talking about reproducibility of results and how to do that with code. Mm -hmm. um, and also talking about some of the challenges with that, like data is easier because you're not going to, once you've cleaned it, you shouldn't be changing it. Uh, where software, like it's always, it's constantly evolving. So the versioning and managing of environments is a lot more important. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about is also elevating the role of, of software as a, a scholarly output. Um, because if the AGU, I mean, they're, they're a publication house, um, if they decide to try and help elevate the role of software developers and give academic credit for that, that could go a long ways in um, like tenure processes and all of that sort of stuff, um, which is exciting. Um, yeah, and so I think we're going to try and organize potentially a like a town hall at the AGU and like use something like this as a bit of a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, and then potentially or a workshop or something along those lines about open source software, maybe a couple packages. So we might do like 
for example, we could do something on Simpeg and then have Leo do something on Fatty Endo and Leon on um, Obspy. So I'll keep you guys in the loop because if we, I'll certainly be um, appreciating your input as we go forward. And then if you're at AGU, uh, this could be a great thing to, to get involved in. So. Right. That's cool. Yeah, so that's been exciting. That's cool. Uh, yeah, just, uh, there were a couple open source actually, I just forgot the yeah, software shown in that conference. Oh, yeah. That one was for NMR. Actually, from Trevor, have you heard about Trevor Ives? He's from oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yago's group, and then I think um, he's in uh, Arhus University now. No, I think he's in uh, uh, Utah. No. Okay. I haven't like had a chance to meet him, meet yeah. him, but yeah. I've seen his posters, and there's another guy from France like working on one D time dimension code. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there there were some uh, code developments, and uh, yeah. yeah, it was interesting to chat with them. They want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's uh, it's coming, and I, I think people are more like getting getting can into it, and. Yeah. Uh, but uh, actually, I had a chat with Aspen, and uh, yes, I actually I asked Aspen. Let's say, um, if you develop three D code, yeah, do you want to make it open? He said, really, like no. But I, I kind of got the point, because um, uh, like, yeah, well, even even in, like UBC, but that's like that's our fun, like a funding source, and uh, like I cannot really criticize that, but. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what like what's my response. What what, what do I say? Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. What I said was like, uh, yeah, there are some pieces like like can still can be open. You don't really have to open like really like optimized commercialized code. Yeah, but there there can be some part can be open. Well, I mean, it depends on how you want to work. Like, what I think is cool with Simpeg and like a funding model, I would see is like. Dropping something like GIF tools on top of it, because um, the usability is actually the piece that people pay for. Right. Um, yeah, but it's it's certainly like an interesting conversation. Yeah, it was interesting actually. So our group now they got a company uh, for their workbench, yeah. for instance. Um, so it's kind of separate, but still, yeah, very closely connected, I guess. Which was uh, which was interesting. Yeah, so Tui is actually working on, I haven't met him, but I have met his uh, friend. Yeah. Uh, working on that company. So Tui is in that company oh, now, yeah. developing some stuff. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, well, it's a very small world. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Um, well, let's maybe switch gears and look at some code. Um, so there's a couple of things on the go. I know um, Dev and I requested, if you don't mind, uh, could you get some release notes together? I pinged you on Slack, um, but we need to put those out with the merge that you did to master, just so that it's very clear what changed, what's new, all of that. Um, so in the Slack message, I included a link to one of the release notes that was just really well done. Um, so you can use that as a bit of a, a guide. Sure. And then we'll get that out today. Um, Soggy, I think, which one? It was the DCIP Spectral IP? Yeah, that so really that's, cool. uh, that's actually what I'm working on. I think that's close. Uh, there are a couple things I'm not sure, but uh, well, it's passing. OK. Um, yeah, because I would like to get that in pretty quickly, because you made some changes um, that Oh, yeah, so Dom needs to take a look at that. That's right. Because um, you made some changes that, uh, like, uh, I also made some upstream changes on a different branch. And so there'll be a bit of merge stuff to resolve. Um, that's in this one. Yeah. So in this one, I filled out the, the fields object for the time domain and cleaned up a few things. I also made it so that, like, E and J are always in the same place, and B and H are always in the same place when you're swapping formulations. Okay. Because it's just so much easier when you're writing plotting code and all that sort of stuff to treat them as equivalent. Yeah. Um, 
So I'll, like once your pull request is done, we'll get that in and then I'll bring your changes up to here and then we can try and get that in as well. Yeah, so that's, uh, I wasn't trying to do it, but it's, it's pretty big now. It's been a while and then there are quite a few things that I have to change it, merge it. I think it's, yeah, let's just merge. I'll make a note. So. There are some good things. And well, what, because the DCIP spectral IP? Yeah, so I, I think I had, like, I merged it what Dom did, and uh, like, for his latest like, development in sparse stuff. OK. Uh, so I wasn't, like, that part I'm not quite sure. It's working, it's running, and it passes the task, but I'm not 100% sure. OK, so this stuff is stuff that Dom should look at? Yeah, okay. uh, I, I think so. Well, at least you need to take a look at past the test, but I think some of the example, I had to change some parameters. So. Okay. Quite sure. Yeah, and then the other thing was just, did you get rid of like the option to save? Uh, I felt save like a, ha having that is, is okay. Uh, I'm not, uh, I wasn't sure. I, like there are probably some cases where that's less efficient. Less efficient. It depends upon the case. I, I, I think I, I thought putting that as an option might be might be better. Okay. Um, yeah, because we totally um, we totally could. I was just wondering, like, if it's a knob that's really necessary. I don't like because I I can't really see. I don't know. When I was looking at, it, I couldn't really like think of a scenario where I want to wipe them in between each iteration. Um. Because it's just a sparse matrix, right? Like it's just, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't do much memory-wise. Yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, we can do either. I just sort of thought it like unnecessarily complicated the code. That was all. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm pretty open, and then I. What I thought, like, I may not want to lose, because uh, I, I think there are probably some values of the other other ways to form. Yeah. Other ways to do, and uh, if you delete that, I think you kind of lose. But uh, you're true. right. But then we can always go back and take a look. Well, like for the commented out stuff, um, if if it is worth keeping, like totally keep it. Don't worry about. Um, it was just more so a comment of like, do we want this or not? Um, was was some of those comments, but then. Yeah, here I was just wondering. We can leave it for now. Like that's totally fine. It was just like. Yes, yeah, so I, I wasn't sure. I, I think I tested for like my examples and stuff. But I wasn't sure what's the impact for yeah. other people. In theory, it, it, it makes it. Yeah. It's supposed to makes it pretty like at least some like some at least faster. Yeah. But, but, I, but I wasn't sure. So okay. I think that was the main reason. Like I just just for the safety check. That's fair. Okay, so then let's leave it in, and then we can decide to clean it. Yeah, so I, I think it's fine. Uh, let's leave it in, and then if somebody yells, me, okay, we can actually change it. Or okay, that's fine. We can just let, remove other stuff. Yeah. That sounds good. And then the other comment um, was just on the naming. There were some matrices that had a little i that I think should be a big i. Did you see that in DC and IP? Uh, yeah, I saw that. I thought like I was using actually right naming convention, but I wasn't sure that uh, you actually really specified. So let me see. Because in this case, um, let's see. Because if it's little i, so if you're using row little i, then that should be sigma. So these guys here. Right. MCC row i, if it's little i, it should be sigma. If it's big i, what we're doing is actually inverting the matrix. Right. If it's isotropic, there is no difference between them. But if it's anisotropic, they are different. I think that's the case, that row uh, small i. So that's, uh, that's for 2 and a half D code. So then that should be sigma? Uh, I think so. I think so. 
Okay, because I was a bit confused about that, just because based on symmetries, sorry, I should stop and turn around. Um, Because in one case, I think both of them are sigma, right? Like row i, in terms of like row uh, capital I and row little i. Little i. No, they're different. So in one case, you form the mass matrix with um, row and then invert the entire matrix. In one case, you form it with sigma. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the difference, but like yeah. it, it, it again, kind of abstractly, it's kind of sigma, right? Both of them. Right, but naming convention like down the road when we get anisotropic working, that distinction is really important. Right, right, right. So like I just wanted to make sure that we're treating, we're using the correct naming convention now so that we don't have to change it later. Right. Because um, like in this case, I think, and we can sketch this out, if, but if you were in the EB formulation. Th that's a bit different. So that's actually like a, that's oh, like a CC, no. MCC row I. So that's. Uh... So here, if you're working with, um, let's do this up. So nodal is equivalent to EB, right? Yeah. So then nodal, um, the nodal should be with sigma. Um, Self-centered should always be working with row. Right. So then the I should be a big I, because we should be inverting that entire matrix once we get to the anisotropic case. Uh, that's uh, it's a little bit different because that's a turn out the curve on that dot that, and you have another like a sigma k y squared something like. That. Okay. So I think that's uh, that's what it is. So if you if you form uh, if you form into a half D and you have another term here. Yeah. So I, I think that, that like I, I'm saying that as M C C um, row I. So here I don't really need to like an invert the matrix. Oh, okay. So I, it's just a different formula. Like yeah. it's a it's an additional term. So I think that you think. Uh, so that's uh, that's a that's a bit different. So yeah, I think yeah, so both in the uh, total and the cell center term, I need this uh, additional term. I see. So so that's something. So it's okay. So it's, it's, that's a little bit like different. Okay, that's fair. So I think I'm actually following the right convention, I guess. So. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Does that get me off of it? And is this the node inner product matrix? Is this doc string right? I think that's for because uh, this is MCC row I. That's for uh, sorry, that's for HG, I think. But this is on cell centers though, right? Yeah, so I, yeah, so I think that E B is not quite right. And it's... node inner product is also not quite right? Because this is a cell centered inner product, right? Right. So okay. I think I yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you don't mind, just maybe ping when um, uh, uh, Don's had a chance to take a look, and then yeah, we'll get that in. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the other thing that I would appreciate uh, input and support on is we're starting to pull some of the uh, like useful general utilities out of discretize, potentially out of SIMPEG, um, and put them in um, somewhere that's a little more public and easier for other people to jump in on. So I started by pulling out some stuff into matrix utils. So now this is in open geophysics. So stuff that's in open geophysics, we're hoping is like useful beyond SIMPEG. Um, and so ideally this should be like among our highest quality code, 
So right now, Matrix Utils like needs some love in that sense uh, to get a PEP8, to get the documentation in order and all of that sort of stuff. They're fairly simple utilities. So this is things like MakeVec, NDGrid, Cron3, um, the zero in the identity. Um, and so if people are willing to just like come in and hit on some of these things, um, that would be fantastic. So if you have, I don't know, if you have an hour at the end of the day where you're tired and want to just like clean up some things and contribute to something, going in and adding doc strings and then um, also changing names. So like this should be a PEP8 name, it's not. Um, so the way to do that where it's backwards compatible is we would rename this, allow you to still import that. So keep one below. Um, so you do def as array, capital N, X, capital DIM, um, allow somebody to call that, but first throw a warning at them and say, this will be depreciated. Um, please use the correct name. And then, um, and then you still return, like you then go into the correctly named function. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so if you're willing to branch off of this, if you're not on the Open Geophysics um, organization, just ping me and I'll add you. Uh, I'll try and add everybody after this. Um, yeah, right now there is only you and Peter. <laughs> that's entirely possible. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go in and add everybody after this. Um, and so again, just like branch off of master and we'll do a pull request and then bump version and all of that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, so that's um, kind of exciting. And the docs, I think, should be up and running and all of that for this, and testing is in place. So that's, um, that's all there. So I will put that on the um, meetings Slack channel. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you guys want to go over today, chat about? Um, just what I'm thinking of, like you mentioned, Pepe again. I, I don't. I don't know if we ever did it. Like we had several conversations and meeting of like, okay, which type of uh, convention we we take, etc. But I don't think it made it to like a a wiki or something of some sort or like a page to summarize all of that. Yeah. So maybe something like not prioritized, but keep in mind that might be something yeah, like in the wiki in the wiki thing of simple that might be useful to, yeah. to add at some point. I'm wondering if you want to do that or if we want um, even a different repository that's just like a style guide. Yeah. That's just a markdown. And still in very great to uh, like uh, one thing I found really useful lately. Like uh, I, I I tried a bunch of uh, auto formatter in, in, in Sublime that just like do the paper for you while you're working your code. Yeah, and that's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Or like you, or just like a combination of of things that you you, you press when you save. Yeah, and it's does like just the the paper on all your document or on all your document. Oh, nice. Would you mind sharing the link for that? In yeah, the, the I think meetings? I put that in random a long time ago in, in, on Slack, but I can definitely reshare that again. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Ooh. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, the, there was one other thing. I was hoping Don was going to be here, but we'll chat with him. Uh, later as well. I got an email from uh, Jared Peacock, who is at the USGS, and they are interested in doing some more um, potential fields inversions, as well as contributing to processing. Um, and so we might try and do a conference call with him later this week or early next, um, just to flesh out some things. And also, I'd like to put him in touch with uh, John on the processing side of things, because I think there's a lot of overlap, um, and we can try and sort of maximize that and reduce efforts there because it would be nice for both of them to be able to, you know, contribute and have that move the whole thing forward a little faster. Of 
which type of data I'm doing. Uh, Jared would be most interested in MT. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of nice is we'll be able to draw like John's bringing a lot of the DCIP. He does have some MT processing, um, okay. I believe, in there. And then Jared will have a lot more. He's done a lot of uh, stuff looking at like the robust processing that Gary Egbert's talked about and all of that. Um, and then my so. be even like common tools that you can share between the two. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that sounds, that'll be good. So I'll keep you guys in the loop on that. And then I got a message from Joe um, Capriotti at Mines, and he's got the Octree uh, UBC reading in, in the new um, software that he's written. So that's exciting. So things are moving forward on that and for the Octree. Which, sorry, is that an MT Octree code that he's? No, just the Octree. He's been rewriting the discretized Octree implementation in C. Oh, uh, so it's much better and much faster. And so he then, like, there's a few things that he's thinking through a little differently. And so at first when we were testing, there was some stuff that didn't match, which is fine because it, it shouldn't have. We both, like, the way that Rowan thought through it and the way that Joe thought through it was just slightly different. So their, like, numbering and hanging nodes was different. Um, but now we sort of try to through that. We understand, like, how he's thinking about it. Um, and then wanted to be able to make sure that we can read in now a UBC mesh. Um, so he's able to get that up and running, thanks to Mike for providing that. So, oh, cool. yeah, so now it's just a question of like getting the operators building. Um, and so we might try and connect with him later this week too. That's exciting. Um, yeah. uh, how far is he? Like, uh, so yeah, he's writing all of the codes or? Well, the, not, everything, um, but rewriting like how we number the octree and how we construct some of the operators. Oh. Yeah. Like how we search the how we search the tree, basically. That's cool. But in the end, the organization of each cell is going to be the same. It's just how it's being stored and how it's, each cell is sort of being queried. Uh, what do you mean? Well, you could have the first cell be the you know, bottom southwest or the top northeast or like those kinds of things. So when it's getting uh, stored or constructed, is the order the same? Um, we can recreate the same ordering, but it's not necessarily going to traverse the tree naturally in the same way. I, I don't remember that offhand. We'll have to connect with Joe on how that, how all of that is working. So. So when, uh, that, when that's going to happen, like conference call with Joe? I don't know yet. I haven't um, been in touch with him. What's uh, what's his initiative actually, like, like developing on trees and what's uh, what's kind of what's his uh, his goal on this end? Like what's just curious. So. Um, I like. I think it's general interest. I don't know if he's got a project that's specifically using it. Um, yeah, I, I don't entirely know if he's got a project that'll use it right away. But I wouldn't be surprised if it fits nicely into a lot of the work that he's doing. So, just curious. passion project right now. I think. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, for next. Do you guys have anything in mind of what you would like to do for the meeting? Is there anything people want to present on? Um, there's nothing I could present that that the constrained version. So Dom and I actually developed that that the constrained version. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can apply for group pronoun. Yes, yeah, runs. Runs. It nice. runs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like yeah, it does a does an okay job. I'm yeah. not sure it does a great that, job, but that, uh, that's a good step. So I think, uh, yeah, so it's actually, it's done, yeah. so, like, yeah, run frequency domain inversion for like a large, yeah. large data set. So Bucron is about a thousand, thousand soundings, and it takes about, like, a couple of minutes yeah. to run. So that's actually pretty nice, and if you got a bigger machine, that actually scales up nicely. Yeah. So uh, we talk about that. Nice, yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. It's